Hey, what's up guys? It's Ross here. Today I'm showing you a short interactive experience that I made for one of my classes. It's basically a, a Spider-Man game. That's what uh, people call it. So I made all the assets in Photoshop. I used textures um, and I made the shapes myself. And then I used Unity to do this like whole animation. Here's the first scene, uh, or the second scene rather. You can see we can click on these things. They're highlighted. And then we have little controls in the bottom, right? And this is my slogan. You're only allowed to have like five words in it. And mine are move the way you want. Uh, that's all. Those, those are the only words you can have in the whole experience. That's the challenge. And that focuses on keeping it a lot more abstract. Yeah, this is the core gameplay. I'll show you guys a little trick. If you feel like you're going really slow, you can die and then you'll go a lot faster. See? See how fast I'm going now? If you fall off the screen, you'll die, um, as you saw, and you just have to click on these platforms to keep swimming, to keep swinging. This is basically the whole thing. Usually I can do it a lot faster, but I'm a little, I'm a little out of practice. Then you swing into this cave, and then so begins like the second stage, just a little lava thing. I'll walk you guys more through this. I had some challenges with this part. It was really laggy when I first played it. Or when I first, like, built it out and tried playing it. Ooh, okay. <laughs> this one's actually, like, decently challenging because you lose a lot of speed. So, let's die, see what happens. Boom. That was also bad. Oh, okay, barely made. Yeah, and if you click somewhere other than spikes, nothing happens. Okay. Come on, man. See, no, no shot here. Here we go, here we go. Okay, boom. And that is the bird with her hat there. <laughs> In case you didn't pick that up from the opening cutscene. So, yeah, bird put eggs in the hat, in case you can figure it out with the abstract art style. This music was made by my friend Elon, uh, I'll credit him in the description below. A lot of the sounds were taken off freesound.org, I believe it is. And that's the ending. Here, this is the play button. Here you can see how it all works. Um, actually, I'll open the hierarchy so you can see the assets. Keep it in the scene. So, just intro, right? Um, the background scales. I think I might have that. The background scales with the camera, and it that way the texture doesn't change or doesn't ever get too zoomed in. Where is the background, man? Did I delete this? Am I confused? Oh, and then from here, you go into the first scene. So lots of stuff going on, but it's prefabs of the same building block here over and over again. So I only made three blocks, red, purple, and green. And these blocks are just repeated. I'll go ahead and show you guys what each object looks like. Looks like. So if you click on red, for example, let's see, I have it under my prefabs. Um, then we can go into red. Yeah. So <laughs> I have an object here. Um, and then I have a polygon collider and a rigid body. But I said the rigid body is static, so it doesn't float around or anything. It just stays in place. And then the other buildings are the same thing as red, except they're just like different colors and shapes. If you use the polygon collider, it'll automatically set the shape. And here's the player object. Well, he's very jumbled right now, but he has a pair of arms, a pair of legs. The arms and legs actually just both become his legs during cutscenes, so he can walk. Uh, you can see I don't really have much on player object except the script decreased gravity, which sets the gravity to slower before the player clicks on anything. Everything else in the character is a, um, a child of the character body asset. Same thing, rigid body, polygon collider, I don't know why I have two colliders on here, actually. That's kind of strange. That's really weird. Oh, one of them is just for a trigger. And then I have a respawn script that kind of dictates how you respawn in when your character dies. Instead of resetting the whole scene, I just set the character's position back a little bit. This is same stuff with rigid bodies, and then I did a hinge joint. This is the leg. And if you click on this, it shows where it's jointed to on the parent body. And it can rotate all around here, but it's stuck on this point, and it just rotates around it. And this is a character arm. Same thing, hinge joint, and then a distance joint and a line render. This is how I did the rope swinging. 
And I just want to create, like, I followed so many tutorials to do this. Uh, people post YouTube videos over for everything. So, like, if you want a more in-depth tutorial on any individual mechanic in this game, comment. But also, like, there's definitely YouTube videos out there, and that's what I use. So this is a grapple script right here. Um, you start, and you just turn off the distance joint. That way you don't start, like, locked into anything when the rope joins. The distance joint is basically, that's just the rope, like, the physics for the rope. The line render is just what the rope looks like. Yeah, update is called once per frame. Start is only called on the first frame once, unless you restart the scene. This is the mechanics behind the rope swinging. Um, I got this from a tutorial online, a one minute tutorial. This one right here, that is where I got somewhere, is where I got the tutorial and this coding for this. And then I modified it, but mostly using ChatGPT. ChatGPT is like the best tool ever for Unity. Like you can give it any goal you have and it'll outline how to code it, and it will give you the actual code and like every script you need. It's insane. Uh, really helpful. So that's how rope swinging works. Let's see, anything else? Oh, I have a light, a 2D light that is always um, parented, that is always connected to the character. And then I have an audio source, which I play the music just from the character. This cave is another thing. Um, I put a box glider. It doesn't necessarily line up with the shape, but I just want people, whenever people get into this space, I want them to be teleported to the next world. So I use the next scene script, uh, which is pretty easy. It's just like if player trigger enters, then send me to the next scene. I did a lot of tweaking. I had some people in my class play it and tell me like, oh, this is way too hard. So I moved the platforms closer together. I modified the movement. So it was, uh, you just get more of a boost. Actually, I'll show that actually. That's included in the grapple script as well. So this right here, there's a velocity boost factor. I, I asked ChatGBT chat to do it. I wouldn't know how to implement this at all if you like asked me to. At whatever point the player lets go, it'll boost the character with the velocity boost. These objects here, when you put public in the script, then you could modify them here. So you can either drag them in for these ones or you can just like change the number. And if I bring the velocity boost, the character will get more of a boost when they let go of the rope, which makes it easier. I'm of the belief that it's more fun and more powerful feeling to like be able to go further with each swing and go faster than just bring the objects closer together. It's good to feel powerful. That's really what you want to feel when you play a game, I think. Here's the falling scene. You have the player. <laughs> You've all these stalagmites here. My problem before is that if you take a shape as complex as this, and then I'll just show you. If you do the <coughs> add component and you do a polygon collider, it'll make this crazy shape, which, yeah. You look at this warning, um, there's overlap. The shape just doesn't work. Look, I mean, look at this corner here. Like this is not what a collider should look like. Um, I'm sure there's a way to make a custom collider. That would be like mostly it, but I found the easiest option for me was just to do a capsule collider. There was so much lag if I did the polygon collider shape, so I had to go with the capsules. And that's just like a sacrifice you have to make, um, an unexpected issue. And here I have like a black background instead, more paper texture, and I really like this part. I did the 2D light on the background here, and then like this is the feather, so just makes the lava seem cooler. Oh, I also have a simple animation for the lava frame. So you can see here, I just cycle out between three, yeah. It goes left to right and it switches every time and I cycle out between these three frames, which is just random Photoshop pen tool stuff, like just random lines I was drawing. And that kind of creates, here I'll play it out, that creates the anime, the, the feeling that the lava is moving below you and that it's like bubbling. And I also like the sound that I, that I used here. See how the lava looks like it's moving, even though it's only three frames and it doesn't even correlate to like your movement exactly. Yeah, and then I have the collider down here for the lava that'll respawn a little bit lower. It's a little more forgiving <coughs> when you respawn. Uh, I didn't even show you guys what the teleport does. So you do get stuck. I created like the right click. It refreshes every three seconds, but it allows you to do a little mini teleport. So boop. see how I teleported there? Sometimes you get stuck in the geometry uh, and like the objects you're swinging on and you can't do anything. And the teleport is just a simple way to like slightly move yourself so i'll go ahead and show you guys the last scene so it's pretty simple you can see the lights low right now because by default i set the global light to low and then once the player clicks that's when the global light goes up the global light is a light that covers in 2d worlds it covers the whole thing so everything is at least that brightness and then any brightness you put on like 
See that I have a little glow on the objects? Any objects, any light on these objects is just added on top of the global light. And this is the final building where you land. And then, as you can see, I have a trigger zone here, or I have a box glider here. And then once you hit that, it triggers the final scene. So I'll play through this real quick. My favorite part about this game is that it's like fun. Like swinging is fun. It's challenging. Uh, it makes you feel like Spider-Man. Oh, that's like a little animation with the bird. Yippee. You can see it's really lagging right now. That's mostly because I'm recording audio and video and I'm running this off a hard drive. So pretty impressive. Yeah, so you hit the trigger scene and then this is the final scene, which I'm very proud of. I'll show you guys the uh, behind the scenes. So you can see it's just open this. This like whole drawing part just goes on top of the actual camera. Uh, it's very unsophisticated, but it like worked for the project. And then I have a simple animation where it just loops through the different frames that I drew in Photoshop, and then it just plays those out. And I have the music playing, and that just nice way to end the game. I think um, wraps it up. It was supposed to be philosophical. I don't know how philosophical it is, but it's a nice way to show that. We should be flexible throughout our lives and make sacrifices and like be able to let go of things because they might mean more to other people or births. Very, um, very deep. Big thinker over here. Working on this taught me a lot about prefabs, how important those are, as well as just like tweaking physics and gameplay in order to get it to be enjoyable. Um, as I practiced a lot, I got really good at swinging. I don't think I really showed off my skill in this one, but like when there's no lag in the game, like I, it is like a perfect sign curve when I'm swinging, man. Um, it's, you know, I'm just so good at this because I made it. It's my game. Also, just like a great way to learn about next scenes, um, transitions, basic animation, um, but really cool. Animating in Unity is not super fun. It's keyframe based. So it's pretty similar to um, Adobe Premiere Pro or After Effects, or I think like any animation program that uses keyframes, but good experience nonetheless. Here's my design document for the class. We chose a slogan. This is my inspiration for the uh, art style. The Snail by Henry Matisse. Just We had to use like uh, something from a set of abstract art we were given. If you guys want to pause and read this, it basically just says my goal is to keep everything like childish and fun and just like compatible with having a good time basically and easy to play. Oh, here are all my references. Perfect. I cannot stress enough how useful ChatGPT is for coding in Unity. I really think it's like, like it's a game changer. Like anyone can make a game now. Once you figure out Unity and like just work around and follow some tutorials there, like once you get the baseline, you could just ask ChatGPT for the most complicated, ridiculous scripts and like functions that you want and it'll just write them like right away off the top of the dome it's insane and it's only getting better which i'm sure is scary for a lot of computer scientists but like for amateur game makers like it's so it's so good i think one of the most important parts of getting your game right and this, the difficulty right is having other people play it who aren't pros like you would be just because you've spent so much time making it and tweaking it and you just understand how everything works This is my uh, going for the world record right here. Oh, ooh, okay, I'm doing pretty well. You want it to be like a sine curve. Well, that's what a sine curve looks like. If you don't know what it looks like, um, or just like wavy, I guess. Sine curve is unnecessary <laughs> uh, to explain, but boom. This is definitely the toughest part. But some people are good at it. I think people who study math and science are really good at the swinging games and billiards. It's just something I've noticed. So fall. You don't ever want to completely stop your movement. And that's a, a quirk of... Oh, crap, crap. Okay. Oh, I lost all my speed. Oh, gosh. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. I can come back from this. 
It is laggier. And when the game lags, you lose momentum. Because it's all like... All the physics is like frame-based. Like, it's all done in... I don't know what I'd say in-engine, but... It's dependent on the frame rate. So if the frame rate's lower, you'll like... Lose momentum, which is really annoying. Boom. 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 Oh, crap. Died. Boom. Final cutscene. If you guys have any questions, this is a weird kind of video, but I just want to walk through my game, uh, think about what I learned from it, and just show it off. I'm very proud of it, and not many people are going to play it, but if you do want to play it, I'll leave a link in the description down below. Actually, no, we're going to force some engagement. Comment if you want to play it, and then I'll reply to your comment with a link to it. That's not spam, I swear, it's a big Google Drive. Kind of suspicious, but you can download the game there, check it out. If you have any ideas or tweaks for it, let me know. I, I'd appreciate some like constructive feedback, constructive criticism. Even if it's something I can't really do for this game, something, gonna, something I can apply to future projects would be really handy. Uh, maybe it's etiquette one, using Unity or like naming stuff or like anything. I, I appreciate that. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.